Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today we are featuring uh, Hawkman. Now this is a part of the DC Multiverse line of action figures produced by McFarlane Toys. And this is Hawkman as he's portrayed in the upcoming Black Adam movie. Um, one thing you'll notice with this package is that um, you actually have the Black Adam logo on the front. Uh, if my memory serves me right, most of the time you see the DC Multiverse logo really large up in the front. And you, the logo for the character line is normally on the side right here. Uh, but it seems like they, they really want to uh, capitalize off the upcoming movie and the marketing. So there you go, Black Adam. Uh, we have Hawkman. So with this wave of action figures for the Black Adam movie, um, this is the figure um, I was looking forward to the most. Uh, mostly because of the size of the figure, you know, it has the large wings, um, you know, making it, giving it a sense of like it comes with the most accessories. And for me, it was nice to get this figure as a standard solo release. You know, it's not like in a deluxe box or anything like that. So for me to get Hawkman like this, it's awesome. Um, as you can see, he comes with a mace. And on the back, a very comic book inspired illustration of Hawkman. Uh, from the Black Adam film. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I'm a big fan ever since I was a little kid of like this like Birdman type characters. You know like in He-Man there's Stratos. Um, in the Flash Gordon live action film you know there's Voltan. Uh, in Buck Rogers there was a kind of like a Birdman kind of character in there too. And uh, you know when I was a kid, I loved uh, Hawkman also. Um, it wasn't a much until a much later when I was in college and I was reading the comic books. I didn't realize how complex Hawkman's um, backstory was. Uh, for me growing up, I think I was just more interested in the character visually. And I think this action figure kind of continues that tradition visually. You know, it's a very impressive looking um, character. Uh, first impressions of the action figure in the tray. Wow. Um, that you know simply put there's a lot going on here uh, he comes in with a really cool looking mace let's take this out uh, the mace is nice as you can see right here lots of fine detail uh, the handle there's some man it's really intricate with the detailing going on uh, the spikes on the mace they're not sharp it's a kind of like a soft rubbery bendy plastic as you can see here um, the plastic itself is kind of a rubbery material, which is nice. You know, it's going to warp a little. It's going to bend a little. But I'd rather have a softer plastic than, a, you know, rigid, brittle uh, plastic. Um, it's kind of odd that the ribbon on the handle is flowing upward and not downward. But then again, I think if you hang this from his belt, it makes sense. But cool accessory. Uh, the figure uh, comes with an action figure stand, and then there's um, the trading card in the back. Here we have the wings. Let's take these out. Uh, one of my favorite Hawkman action figures is the, um, uh, the new 52 Hawkman figure produced by DC Direct. It came out maybe like, I want to say maybe like 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, that's a really great figure. Um... Mattel also produced a really cool looking Hawkman. They, I mean, they have a whole bunch of Hawkman figures uh, from Mattel. Uh, either under, I think, DC Classics and I think possibly DC Multiverse. So I remember they made, uh, I think they also had a version of the new 52 Hawkman. And I remember liking that figure a lot also. Uh, the one thing I dislike about Hawkman figures is that since they're so like back heavy because of the wings, it's always kind of hard to get them to stand. Um... You know, there, there are solutions to that. You know, you could buy like one of those third-party flight stands or you could buy one of those miniature doll stands to hold up your action figure. All right, so uh, before we assemble the figure, let's also examine the wings. I'm curious about those. All right, so uh, we have the pair of wings that come with Hawkman. Uh, they're kind of, it's kind of like a, a matte gold. It's not very shiny. It's not very, um, glossy or reflective. It's just a very matte finish. Um, I still have to see the movie, so I can't, I can't tell you if, if it, that's accurate or not. Like in the movie, I don't know if the gold feathers are actually like more like metal plated 
or if they come off matte like this. Uh, one thing is also is that it looks like the wings are not articulated. Like I know with previous Hawkman figures, there, there'd be a hinge here and it'd allow you to fold the wings like this. Um, these wings look like they kind of, not that they remain stationary, but they look like they, once they plug in, it looks like they could just rotate up and down. And we'll examine that in a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at Hawkman himself. Excellent looking figure. Um, it's kind of hard to tell about the likeness um, to the actor because he's wearing the winged helm. And speaking of the winged helm, as you can see, um, very flexible material here. You don't have to worry about this figure falling off your shelf and cracking off one of the, the wings. Um, the sculpting here is really nice. It has um, some battle scarring and scratches, giving it a distressed look. Same with the helm up here. It's kind of weird though because it almost looks, I don't know if it's a sloppy paint job, but it doesn't look as smooth as it should look. I've noticed this with some of the other recent McFarlane figures. Like for example, um, I saw the new reverse flash figure at the store today. And it looks like that figure is making reuse of the um, Injustice flash and the Hot Pursuit flash mold. And some of the sculpting on that figure, I'm not sure if it's because the, they're reusing the same molds and it's mold degradation, but some of the sculpting on that figure, it looks a little bit muddy and it's not as crisp as the original release of the figure. Um, here, the texture is, it seems like it's just as fine as on other figures, but I don't know, there's something about the paint application on here where, or it's the quality of the plastic. It just looks, not that it looks sloppy, but... It looks a little chunky, if you could kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, but beyond that, the detail is uh, fantastic. Here's a front view. Uh, the chest looks awesome. Really fine texturing on his body armor and on the harnesses. Uh, he has an asymmetry design when it comes to his body armor. As you can see, his left shoulder pauldron is a lot larger than the right. Uh, likewise, for the arm, we have asymmetry in the design there. His left forearm has some sort of like guard or mini shield and then he has these smaller talons on his um, left fit left fist right here and surprisingly he has a trigger finger so I'm not sure if they're just re remaking uh, if they're just reusing another hand and s attaching this piece on here or if this is actually serves a purpose uh, the the right hand has a trigger finger also so I'm not sure if that is a giveaway to like in the movie you know does he wield weapons besides the mace um, nice texture on the pants, some beautiful trim here too. It's really sharp and crisp on the sculpting. Kudos to McFarlane on that. Uh, nice knee guards. Again, it has kind of like that battle scarred look. Nice sheen of gold. Uh, it's not highly reflective or metallic. It's almost, I think, more of like a satin finish, which is not a bad thing. All right, so um, in terms of the wings, I'm kind of curious because I, I don't want to commit to plugging in the wings completely in case I decide I want to take them out. All right, so I'm just going to uh, insert the wings. <laughs> I'm just going to go just the tip. So we're just going to insert just the tip, and we're just going to see. So you're going to plug them in like this, and like I mentioned earlier, the wings don't necessarily fold. They're just going to rotate. So those are the only options you'll have. Which, you know, it might be okay, but I always like the option of, you know, giving the wings a little bit more posability. But for a 19 to $22 figure, you know, that's, you know, at this level of detail and articulation, I think it's still great. Yeah, so you're going to plug both of them in. Uh, you know, I'm just going to adjust the tip. I'm not going in all the way. <laughs> not that I've ever said that before. Um, right, this will give you an idea of what it'll look like. So it's going to look something like this. All right, which is, I think, it's, God, that looks awesome. That looks, that looks really sick. Um, just a tip. Get that in there. Yeah, this is a standout figure. For me, this is the standout figure in this wave. Um, the Dwayne Johnson Rock uh, Black Adam figure, I think there's two versions of that. I actually have one of them that I'll review in the future. I have the... The one without the hood, and then I have one on pre-order. I think it comes, there's one with the hood and the cape. 
I think the one with without the hood's called like the hero version. So I'm kind of wondering if that's a giveaway on in terms of the plot. So yeah, this looks great. Excellent figure. Let's examine the articulation now. All right, so uh, for Hawkman, his head rotates like this. Does he look down? Looks down pretty far. Now, for me, this is a test. Hawkman's a flyer. Will he, can he pose his head in flight mode? Yeah, it's pretty decent. He looks pretty far up. It's decent. It's not as kicked back as some other figures, but it's a lot better than most. Um, his arms rotate. You're going to hit the shoulder here on both arms. They go out. Uh, there's a butterfly joint on the inside. Double pinned elbows. Um, wrist articulation right here. Standard. Does he have an ab cut? No ab cut, but he does crunch forward a little. Very soft material here, so he will crunch forward. Uh, one thing I've stated before, especially in my early review of McFarlane figures, I'm really curious about um, the life of these softer plastics. You know, like in five or ten years, are these things going to start to deteriorate? Are they going to dry out and crack? You know, much like dry rot with like a bicycle tire. You know, I kind of wonder about that. Like, it's beautifully sculpted. You know, I love the mobility of it, but, you know, what's the life of these softer plastics? I'm, you know, that's something I'm going to wonder about for a long time. This is him arching back and then exposes his belly. And uh, it's pretty much universal with the way he's assembled, much like other McFarlane figures. He probably has the same joints on the inside. He kicks up right about there. It's decent. Kicks out. Oh, you're looking full splits and beyond. That's awesome. Um, does he have a slight, slight thigh swivel? Just a little bit, not a whole lot. Double pinned knees, as you can see here. And um, ankle articulation. Very standard for a McFarlane figure in terms of um, the articulation scheme. But man, this is a nice looking figure. So yeah, all right. So if I had to rate this guy on a scale of one to ten, uh, I'm gonna be very generous and say this guy's either an eight and a half to a nine. Um, visually, very impressive. Um, you know, for me, this is the standout figure of the set. Um, I'm really curious to how they're gonna portray Hawkman in the film. You know, much like all the other characters, I've seen the entire wave at the store, but for me, this is the figure I really wanted. Um, Adam Smasher was kind of a pass. Uh, what's the other one? Cyclone. She was kind of a pass. I might get them in the future, especially after I see the film. Um, the Rock. I'm a big wrestling fan, and even though <laughs> I have a very love-hate relationship with The Rock, um, I still needed that figure. But for me, Hawkman. This is the the figure I really wanted. You know, I love Hawkman type characters, and this guy just looks friggin' amazing. Look at that. That is completely badass. Wow, this is I don't I'm, I'm tempted to say this be, might be this might fall in like uh, my top ten favorite figures from McFarland this year, which is kind of surprising because with the movie um, I saw the trailers and it looks great to me. Um, I like Black Adam the way he's been portrayed in the comic books, especially like um, early on in the New Fifty Two. And um, I don't know I'm I was kind. The movie looks fun, but I'm, I'm kind of, you know, still kind of reserved on whether or not the story is going to be any good. But in terms of toys, man, we're getting some pretty cool toys out of this. Um, there's even some budget toys. So if you have little ones, uh, they have the smaller, like, tiny figures. And then there's actually even vehicles for that and play sets, I believe. So, you know, Mattel's kind of, they're kind of all in with this. And, yeah, look at that. That looks great. Definitely one of my favorite looking figures. This looks awesome. And I, to be honest, I'm so tempted just to get another one of these just to create a custom. I'm like on a custom kick right now. And I think, you know, there's some cool pieces here to be used. You know, if you want to make a gladiator, just take off these shoulder pieces. Uh, the helmet's really cool. You know, if you want to make some sort of variation of Thor, you know, you can use this helmet. Overall standout figure. It looks great. 
All right, so let's wrap this video up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.